Hey everybody, I'm Tim Cooper and I'm here to show you a few Lightroom and Photoshop tricks that you can use to improve your nighttime photography. And be sure to stick around to the end, I might even have a bonus tip for you. I want to start with a very common technique um, and that's shooting uh, the Milky Way. Um, and a lot of times your Milky Way may not seem as present as it could. Well, if you're in Lightroom, we've got this slider down here called the Dehaze slider, and they've just moved it up in the most recent version of Lightroom into the Presence panel, which is exactly where it should be. And simply moving that Dehaze slider up does amazing and wonderful things for your sky. Now, the only thing you want to be careful of is sometimes it gets a little too saturated. So what I'm going to do is pull back my saturation just a little bit, but we'll still end up with that very prominent Milky Way. So, you want to pull out your Milky Way? Dehaze your sky. If you're in Photoshop, you're not able to use your dehaze filter, but you still may want to bring out those stars against the blue sky in the background. Well, there's an easy way to do it. Just duplicate your background layer. Then what you can do is select your sky, and what we're going to do is mask it out. I'm just going to use the quick selection tool. And then apply a mask to that layer. And then we click back onto that layer itself and we're going to change that blending mode from normal to overlay. And suddenly the sky gets a lot darker and a lot more saturated. And if it's a little bit too much, you can grab your opacity slider and pull it back a little bit. But now those stars are starting to come out a lot stronger against that blue sky. Luminosity mask. This is a mask we used to use all the time long before HDR came out. I mean, it's really easy to access and it's really easy to use. So in this case, you can see that in order to get the detail in the rock here, I have to blow out my lights. The layer below it, I have good detail in my lights, but my shadows are all blocked up and all stopped up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my upper layer. I'm going to go to the channels palette. And then if you're on a Mac, hold down your command key, PC, that would be control key. And I'm going to click on this RGB composite layer and that's going to create what we call a luminosity mask. I'll return to the layers panel. I am going to go down to the add a mask button and click and that turns that into a mask. Now the only problem is the mask needs to be reversed so I hit command I and now we have good detail in our lights and good detail on our shadows. So you can see the before and the after. If you all are like me you're going to be taking and using lots of selections and lots of masks. There's no reason to recreate the wheel every single time. So for example, on this image I want to get a little better separation between the sky and the foreground. So I'm going to select the sky using my quick select tool and let's see, I'll create a photo filter adjustment layer to give it a little bit more blue. So we'll choose a cooling filter and cool that off a little bit. All right, good enough. Now, once you have a mask made, it's almost like a cookie cutter. You can use that and create other selections and other masks from it. So if I want to reload that exact selection, I hold down my command key or on a PC control and click on that mask. And as you can see, that reloads that exact selection. Now, because I want to work on the bottom part of this photograph, what I'm going to do is go up to select inverse and now the whole opposite is actually selected and for this I'm going to create a curve and try to make the houses just a little bit more dynamic down there so I'm going to add in a little bit of black and add in a little bit of white so it feels about right and maybe even a touch of contrast by taking my curve and altering it that way so you can see I have two the exact same mask, but they're just opposite each other. And if I wanted to reuse any of these again, I could just command click on this one, that would reload the selection, or I could command click on the top one and that would reload the skyline selection. 